Hello friends. Today we're going to be working on this post hole digger. And this is mounted on a 980 Hofco post hole drill. The engine is a Tecumseh two cycle. I believe it's a five horse. And this is a common two cycle power head that Tecumseh sold to lots of different companies for different applications. The big thing you see a lot of these on is air cooled outboard motors. Sears Game Fisher and Montgomery Ward's Ted Williams, along with some Eskas, all use this exact same power head. Carburetor on, it's very simple. It's a diaphragm style carburetor. You can see the diaphragm cover right there. A little tiny air filter built over the top of the opening. A manual choke, which I like. It's a two cycle gas oil mix. And it has a simple air driven governor right here with a little fan that sticks up and catches the air from the flywheel and pulls it over toward the idle position until you squeeze the throttle lever here, which moves the governor spring and puts tension on it to bring it back toward the accelerated position. So it's a real simple setup. That's nice because this one has a kill switch right here by your thumb for a handle throttle. And it's geared down, so it's got more power and torque and doesn't spin too fast. It's, it's a nice little setup. These are pretty easy to work on. And all he really wanted me to do was clean and adjust the carburetor on it. And if you look at it really close, you can see the white paint still on the gasket and diaphragm area here, which means that this has the original carburetor, gasket, and diaphragm on it. This is an older unit. They say it's a cast iron cylinder on these, so they hold up longer. We're going to pop the spark plug out and do a compression check real quick just to make sure there's no issues with the compression. And then we're going to pull the carburetor off and replace the diaphragm and gasket in there and check the needle and seat to make sure that's functioning properly. We're going to show you how to do all those things. We used a three-quarter inch socket to pull the spark plug out. And we're going to screw in the compression tester Put it into the spark plug hole can tight we're gonna give it like four vigorous pulls and then we'll take a reading on the gauge and that came out right at 100 psi pretty simple to disassemble but if you want a little extra room you can grasp the fuel tank and wiggle it upward and it comes right off and then you can just lay it aside or access the clamps to take it off more efficiently. Now that's off, we'll snap off the air cleaner cover. That just snaps off. We can clean the filter pad if we want to with a little carburetor cleaner or gasoline. Same thing with the foam filter block. And then the inside has another screen in it, which probably should be clean too because there's quite a bit of dust and debris in that. If we want to, we can take off the air cleaner horn here by removing the two slotted screws. The whole carburetor off with these nuts on either side. There's two of them. You remove the nut on either side of the mounting plate. That's a 3 8 inch nut. And then in order to slide the carburetor all the way off, we'll have to disconnect the spring that goes from the throttle plate over to the governor. That was an easy carburetor to take off. If you look down through the throat into the engine there, you can see the reed plate. And if you look at the reed plate, just make sure it's not bent or damaged. It's all there blocking the hole off snugly. You now the reed plates on these very seldom go bad, but it is possible that one could break off. Now the next step is going to be to remove the bottom cover plate by removing these four combination screws. They look like Phillips screws and Phillips screwdriver will work but a straight bit screwdriver works just as well. The best way to do it is just get your fingernail behind the cover plate and try and pop it off. If it, There you go, that one came right. Surprise, it came right off since it looks like it's the original diaphragm and gasket. And now we'll have a look. This is a F-body carburetor. You see the letter F right there next to the throttle? So when we have the F-body carburetor, we need to pay attention to how the diaphragm and gasket go on. I can tell this one's bad already because the thing is stiff as a board. I'm not getting any pumping action here at all. 
And it also kind of looks like they have it on backwards. So let's have a look and see. see. This is the, like I said, this is the F body carburetor, which means that when you're putting it together, the diaphragm goes on first and the gasket goes on top. And they've got it backwards here. They've got the gasket on first and then the diaphragm, which means it's not going to hit and push the metering valve far enough to open it up. But as stiff as this thing is, it's not going to push anything anyway. Now that we've removed it, we can see the carburetor is actually very clean inside. And the metering valve is right there, that little needle valve. That's what the diaphragm vibrates up against with the stroke of the piston and pushes that little pin in the center upwards, which allows fuel to flow into the area here of the carburetor before being pushed up into the carburetor itself then vaporized and sucked into the engine. If you wanted to, you could take this brass nut out here to remove the needle valve, a spring, and seat if you're having trouble with leakage, but we didn't buy that part. We just bought the diaphragm kit instead of the whole assembly. And I'm going to link both parts in the comments or in the uh, description of this video. So if you want to, you can go right to Amazon and buy either the diaphragm and gasket kit or the complete kit with the needle and seat included. Here's our new diaphragm and gasket set from Oregon, and it's part number 49002, and it replaces Tecumseh part number 63978. Since it's the F body, we're going to start with the diaphragm, and we're going to lay it face down with the large silver part and the ridge facing the carburetor. See the ridge in it that goes all the way around? That's facing up toward the carburetor body, and there's also the big silver plate on the opposite side facing the carburetor. We have the diaphragm, then the gasket, like so. And now we'll carefully push all four screws into place, aligning them all and getting them started nice and easy before we tighten them down. I just removed the main adjustment screw and took it out and cleaned that really good. Tightened it all the way back up gently and then backed it out one and a quarter turns, which was just about where it was at when I started. And we'll use that for our initial adjustment point. Now we need to get the governor spring back on. And the governor spring goes through this front hole of the throttle plate here. And we'll be ready to put this back together. The choke is on. It's all back together. The ignition switch is on. And we're going to fire this baby up. Squeezing the throttle. Look at that, running great. I'll probably have to release the choke, I bet it'll stay running. And there we go, I shut it off. Good as new for the price of a $10 gasket set. Now I can return it back to the owner and I hope you'll be happy. He can drill some holes. Thanks for watching, have a great day.